I'm here with Michael McCain at Ivy to speak about some of the aspects of leadership. Michael, welcome to the school and, and thank, thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'll start with questions about leadership that go to the very basics, specifically the when and how questions. When did you realize you were a leader and what led to that realization? Well, that's an interesting question, uh, Stuart. And uh, I think what makes it interesting is that I, I can't recall spending a great deal of time thinking about that. Uh, probably because, um, you know, my belief would be that uh, leadership is, you know, less a person, less a, uh, a title, less uh, an event, if you will. It's more an evolution and an attitude. And so it's very challenging to pinpoint, you know, when that attitude uh, and perspective uh, emerges. And uh, sometimes it's situational, sometimes it's uh, positionally uh, related, but um, uh, you know, I think uh, I think those attitudes uh, can be displayed at any level in in uh, an organization and any age in a human being. So, uh, you know, when the the actual you know crystallization of that occurs is uh, you know it's probably impossible to uh, specifically identify. Well, it, when you speak of it that way, it, it sounds like. Uh, a process of learning as you go along. Completely. It's, a, it's an evolutionary learning process where you, you know, you start out at, uh, you know, at a rudimentary level, um, you know, and, and, and not a, exactly, you know, consistent in the, uh, in, in applying those, uh, those learnings, right? Where, where over time you, you develop your own personal model, your own personal belief systems, and through experience, through uh, good experiences and probably more importantly through bad experiences develop uh, develop um, you know what you really believe in in terms of uh, a leadership model that uh, that is effective for the individual for you and and maybe the others around you and and in that light again with the evolution of a leader as 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 you move through organizations as others that you see move through organizations can you think of things that change that had to change or that had to be left behind as your roles changed and as you encountered new experiences and new oh, responsibilities? Of One of the attributes of great leadership or leaders is that they're, they are lifelong learners. That's a universal truth. They're lifelong learners and they, they, uh, they always approach you know, situations with a learning mind, uh, in, in, you know, learning headspace. And, and uh, you know, I look back in uh, my own evolution, my own journey, which is you know, still uh, you know, a book uh, not completed, right, is uh, continuing to develop and learn and grow, uh, is um, um, it, those, those you know, points of, of maximum learning usually come from experiences that are, you know, have some kind of spike, you know, spike of success or a spike of failure. And uh, that's where you tend to, you know, crystallize the majority of your learning in those uh, in those uh, evolutions. But um, uh, there's no, there really is. Uh, you know, we believe in, in in our organization that the bulk of learning actually occurs experientially uh, over one's lifetime, and and it's the uh, that's the catalyst for growth. And uh, we, uh, you know, all of the leaders in the organizations that I've been associated with, um, that have been honored to work with, have uh, have committed to that lifelong learning. But. But part of learning sometimes is in the forgetting mm -hmm. or in the deliberately giving up of, of things as you change and as, as your yep. role changes. Yep. Any, any things come to mind that were either challenging to give up or, or that you had a realization that this was going to be necessary for you to move to the next level? Well, without getting specific in, in some of the leadership attributes, the other element of, of uh, leadership development is, uh, is great feedback. We always uh, describe feedback, candid, direct, very, uh, uh, you know, to the point uh, feedback from a broad array of, uh, of stakeholders in your success uh, as being the, the gift of leadership development, right? The, that's the food that, uh, that nourishes, uh, you know, one's development. Uh, I've been blessed in my career to have an abundance of feedback, abundance, uh, both formal and informal, from uh, a range of people who I respect and admire and uh, value their opinions immensely, and and they have not been shy about um, about um, you know delivering their feedback in a way that makes what I need to change personally over over a 30-year journey. It's not, uh, you know, this is not a single event. This is a 30-year continuous journey that is ongoing. 
uh, the things that I need to grow and develop in, uh, they've not been shy in making those very clear. And, um, and, and I value that. Taking that as, as one aspect of how leaders develop or are developed, when you think of your role in the organization as a developer of other leaders, mm -hmm. what are some of the uh, things that you try to do that you work with in your people to, to bring out the best in their leadership ability? Same sort of thing, you know. Uh, I think what we've, we've built in our organization is a model that, uh, that focuses on leadership development from three sources. The one, uh, you know, 70% of it is going to come from experiential uh, treatment, which you know, includes managing those experiences, very overtly managing those experiences, the successes and the failures and the feedback that accrues from, from those. Number two is coaching and mentoring. And, uh, you know, the, there's always a role for coaches and mentors in, in one's personal development. Those are trusted sources of information beyond what you get in a, an experiential environment, particularly ones that uh, are offered, uh, you know, unconditionally. Um, and number three uh, is formal training, right? And so we've tried to invest in the formal training component, although that's an important glue that holds all of the, the structure of one's development together. Uh, certainly we recognize that uh, you know, experiential development and coaching and mentoring would be the, would be the, uh, the cornerstone of, of development, but the formal training is, a, is an, uh, in programs like, the, like what we execute here in our partnership with the Ivy uh, Business School. So, uh, um, you know, our framework is, uh, is largely built around that. We also have, you know, very explicit and robust uh, performance assessment and development planning processes, you know, because leadership development is, is not an innate skill. It's an acquired skill. And, um, and those processes, the rigor of those processes, contributes tremendously to an individual's development. And uh, uh, so we, we are very uh, active in, uh, in um, implementing those, those types of processes. Do you find as uh, you've got a, a series of different generations coming into the workforce much, yeah. that um, the approach that you need to take as a leader as mm -hmm. well as the, the way that you need to develop the next generation of yeah. leaders, is that, is that evolving? In, it is. We had, a, uh, we had an expert uh, come visit our executive council not too long ago who is uh, an expert in uh, you know, the, the culture and attitudes of Generation Y. Right, uh, the, the you know the twenty-something-year-olds, and uh, uh, you know we had in the room in the in the dialogue we had uh, you know post-war generations, we had baby boomers, we had some Gen X in the uh, in there, and just to see the dialogue uh, on their reflections of you know the current generation, what they saw as virtues, what they saw maybe less virtuous uh, in the, in the current generation. Uh, and their development as leaders was fascinating, right? It was fascinating to see the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, those differences and, and to see how they would impact our leadership development uh, in the future and processes. The one conclusion I came away from that experience and the debate and the dialogue that we had on a very interesting subject was that, was that while different, uh, you know, every generation of leader is uh, maybe unique and maybe frustrating to those uh, who, you know, who plowed ground before them, but uh, we're going to be in good hands. Uh, they, uh, the, the, uh, the underlying values and commitment of this generation, while maybe expressed in different ways, is, uh, is absolute. And I think, uh, I think we're going to be in good hands. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome.